Today I will show you a post-apocalyptic horror film from 2018, titled A Quiet Place. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. It's been 89 days since the apocalypse. People are missing and places remain desolate. Children are seen silently moving around an abandoned store. One of them is sitting on the ground and is approached by his mother, who looks for the right medicine to give him, because he's sick. The eldest child is deaf, but they all communicate with sign language. When the youngest child almost drops a toy rocket, its sister grabs it swiftly before it drops and makes a noise. The father joins them and it becomes apparent that they are on a supply run in the store. The youngest still gets the rocket toy, which is swiftly taken away by the father, who is concerned that it might be too loud. Once he's out of the store, the eldest gives the littlest back his toy, unaware that he will also take the batteries back. It's slowly getting dark as they are seen walking barefoot back to their home, with the youngest trailing back behind the group. Suddenly, toy sounds are heard in the background. The group panics as the father is running towards the littlest child. The mother holds her scream. Before the father can get to the child, a creature appears from the woods and cuts right trough it. More than a year after the event, the family is trying to cope with what has happened. The eldest is traumatized and the father obsessed with both the event itself as well as finding means of communication with other people via radio. The middle child wants to drive a car, but he knows that won't be possible. He walks back to their underground home, where the pregnant mother is trying to create a warm nest for her baby. The father can't let go of the memory of their child that died, but the mother, aware of the situation they are in, is preparing a very special crib for the child to come. Sitting on the top of a silo, the father lights a fire and searches for other fires that light up in the distance, a sign that other people are still alive. The same night they have dinner together, using leaves for plates in their hands so they don't make a sound, even praying in complete silence. After dinner, the kids cause a small fire, resulting in the father making noises to extinguish it. The family becomes even more quiet waiting for the creatures to arrive, listening for them above ground. The creatures don't come for them this time. Later, the father is seen fixing the daughter's hearing aid in the basement, when the mother joins him there. They dance and she plays music for him on ear pods. The next day, the mother is performing her daily physical examination. It can be seen that her due date is coming soon. She listens to the baby's heartbeat. Meanwhile, the daughter goes to the house and prepares to walk down the basement, when her father suddenly garbs her and tells her she can't go down there. He shows her the hearing aid he's been working on, explaining that it will work this time. She refuses to take it, but he puts it in her hand nevertheless. Later, the mother is giving the son math lessons, but the father walks in and tells them it's time to go. The son isn't happy about it, so his mother reassures him that everything will be alright. She tells him that he needs to learn those things so he could take care of her in the future. The son and the father are preparing to leave. The daughter insists to join them, but the father doesn't allow it and leaves with the boy. Devastated, the girl runs to her room, where she tries the new hearing aid, only to find out that it didn't work as expected. She gets more flustered, so she starts packing a bag and puts an important wrapped item inside last. The father and son come up to a river, where the father explains that the river masks small sounds so the kid shouldn't be afraid. He tells him that louder sounds can be made if nosier things are nearby. The daughter is seen leaving the farm. Inside, the mother is carrying on with her house duties, when a laundry bag she's pulling gets stuck on a nail in the stairway, almost tipping her over. The father and son go up to a waterfall and suddenly, the father starts howling and scares the boy. He tells him that it's alright and encourages him to howl as well. Back at the farm, the mother goes inside the house, walking around nostalgically. The girl is walking trough the woods away from their home and back at the waterfall the father and son have a conversation about her. The boy tells him that she blames herself for what happened with the youngest child. The daughter is seen walking up to the place where her little brother died. Meanwhile, the mother is in his room, crying. The girl leaves the toy rocket on the grave, as the father and son are still talking. The son tells his father that he should tell his daughter that he still loves her. Later that day, the two of them are walking back trough the woods and come across an old run-down house. As they pass by it, an old man appears suddenly and they stop. Next to him, lays the dead body of a woman. The father notices the man is about to scream and hushes him, but the man screams from the top of his lungs nevertheless. The father grabs the son and hides, then watches as one of the creatures tears the old man apart. Back at the house, the mother is still in the dead child's room, when her water breaks. She tries to keep collected as the pain from the contractions comes in and walks toward the basement. Walking down the stairwell she steps directly on a nail, letting out a small cry. She changes the color of the lights outside so the others know what's happening and as she prepares to leave, one of the creatures appears inside the house. It's rampaging inside, while she stays in the basement and finds a timer. 
The contractions are becoming stronger. In the meantime, the father and son arrive at the farm and notice the change in the lights. Back at the basement, the mother is hiding as the creature comes down and is searching for the origin of the noise it heard before. Its giant ear latches onto the ticking sound of the timer and when it goes off, the creature can't hear the mother running up the stairs. Unfortunately, there is a second one in front of the house, as the father and son find out too. The father gives the boy the task of switching on a device that is louder, so they can help the mother. Back inside the house, she's lying down in a tub, ready to have the baby, when suddenly she hears one of the creatures coming inside. In the meantime, the boy is lighting up a fireworks and the father is prepping a shotgun. The moment she starts pushing, explosions are heard in the background and she lets out an enormous scream. As fireworks explode over the farm, the father runs toward the house with a shotgun. The daughter sees the fireworks as well and runs toward the farm. Back at the house, the father is seen coming up the stairs toward the bathroom, but the mother isn't in the tub. He sees the blood and thinks of the worst, when she pops up from behind the shower screen. Baby noises are heard as the two of them kiss. Meanwhile, the son is walking back trough the crops, when he hears a noise. One of the creatures is heard going after him as he runs, when he suddenly face plants into a giant wheel. The father is carrying the mother and the newborn to their home, when the baby starts crying. He manages to go deeper underground and cover the hole with a mattress, as a creature is seen following their sounds. Underground, the baby is crying and above the creature is trashing around. The father puts the newborn in its special crib, which dampens the sounds of its crying. Back in the crop, the daughter sees a light between the plants, as a creature is walking up to her. She doesn't hear it. The creature latches onto the tiny sounds from her aid and the thing starts emitting a horrible sound, that disturbs the girl and agitates the creature so that it runs away. In the meantime, the father and mother are safely underground. She asks about the other children and he comforts her. The mother starts talking about their dead child, blaming herself for what happened. She makes the father promise her that he will protect their other children. In the crop, the girl follows the light and finds her brother. The father leaves the hiding place to go search for them, but doesn't notice that the basement is flooding. The kids are on top of the silo lighting the same fire the father lit up the previous night, but they run out of gas and the brother comforts his sister. The father looks for them on the security monitors, but is unable to find them. Underground, the mother is woken up by the incoming water and instantly notices a creature down there with her and the baby. It dives under the water, but as she picks up her child, it comes up again. She hides behind a wall of pouring water as the creature follows. Meanwhile, the father arrives at the crop and the children argue on top of the silo, when suddenly the boy drops inside, making a noise that everything can hear, except his sister. When she realizes what happened, she finds him inside, falling deeper in the corn. The creatures are rushing toward the silo, as the sister jumps in to help, but instead gets rescued by the brother from drowning in the corn. The father is coming to save them, but there is a creature inside already. As the children are hiding from it, the girl's earpiece acts up again and chases the creature away. At the house, the mother goes up to check what's happening on the monitors, as the father rushes up toward the silo. He reunites with the children, but they hear a creature close by so he tells them to run toward the truck. The father stays behind to protect them. Suddenly, the creature appears and before he can hit it, throws him on the side. The boy screams, as the mother is seeing it all play out on the monitors. The creature follows the scream and attacks the truck but fortunately the father is still alive. He sees that the children are defenseless inside of the vehicle and, after saying goodbye, screams to attract the attention of the creature. The boy pushes the truck into gear and as it rolls away, the creature gets to the father. As dusk breaks, the children are reunited with their mother, but the creature has followed them. She takes the children to the basement and the daughter sees what the father has been working on, including the many hearing aids he had tried to fix for her. Suddenly, the lights start flickering, the creature has found them and as it's coming down, the mother aims at it with a shotgun. All the electronics glitch and disturb the creature. The daughter figures out that devices like her hearing aid are its weakness and she turns hers on. Before the creature can get to the newborn crying, the girl puts her aid to the radio and incapacitates it. A second later it rises, but the mother shoots it dead. The lights start flickering again. They see on the monitors that more creatures are coming, so the daughter ups the volume on the radio and the mother pumps the shotgun. Oh, 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 oh,